the, the great thing about having Fox on our back is that we get a lot of meetings that other NFT projects don't get. So Matt and I can't say who we've talked to already and who we're planning to talk to. But the beauty of it is, I think the holders are ultimately going to benefit greatly off us being able to get through doors that, I mean, not even the top NFT projects are able to get through. Welcome to another episode of Built on Web 3. Today, we are thrilled to be chatting with Matt Bailfield and Josh Barrow. Matt is a director of product strategy at Blockchain Creative Labs, and Josh is a project manager at Blockchain Creative Labs. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So why don't we start off just each of you telling us a bit about yourselves and what you do at Blockchain Creative Labs. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll get started. My name is Matt Billfield. Um, uh, you mentioned my, uh, my role at BCL. Um, kind of been at Fox for quite a while. Uh, started in animation, was doing fine art on the side, uh, got wind of um, NFTs when they started coming out and released my own art blocks project, um, nice. which, which was a lot of fun was, uh, fortunately a hit and I was officially bitten by the bug. And, uh, so when, when Fox, um, started a blockchain division, uh, with BCL, um, I was the first to raise my hand and, and hop on over and try to figure out how. Uh, how media and uh, Web3 can uh, work together and uh, form the fan relationship of the future between uh, big media and uh, and the people who enjoy the content. Great. And then Josh, what about you? So uh, I, 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 have, I have quite a different journey than, than Matt does, uh, especially no, with the no company. D, no, uh, no NFT summer for you? <laughs> well, uh, well I, I do own, I'm one of the owners of Prime Planet. So if you've heard of it, it uh, Prime Ape Planet was probably the biggest thing aside from Board Ape uh, last, beginning of last year. But that was the original founders that, that ran it back then. Um, they got kind of labeled as ruggers in a sense. So me and, and two others from the community kind of derugged it and took over the project. Nice. Um, I came from an events background though. So massive events background in Las Vegas. But uh, I, I met Matt through the project when they were releasing Crapopolis. Uh, we had a great call and and then he actually got me on board on the team. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I guess, I guess Matt would probably say I'm like the mad scientist of BCL. I trying to think of crazy mechanisms to uh, get interest in, in and from the holders and outside community. And, and yeah, we, I've uh, been working uh, with Matt now for, I can't believe it's already been six months. Nice. Wow. That's great. And uh, for listeners that don't know, can you kind of, um, either of you or one of you kind of describe what BCL is and, um, cause it's a spinoff of Fox and just kind of like talk about the relationship and, and what you guys actually do there. Yeah, uh, happy to take that one. Uh, so Blockchain Creative Labs was formed um, by Fox. Uh, essentially, our CEO is Scott Greenberg, who is a CEO of Bento Box Entertainment. And um, and then our president is Mel Hildebrandt, and she is a CISO of Fox. Um, so they kind of had this, um, this vision to create a new Web3 division where we are kind of tasked with figuring out how blockchain fits in with big media, uh, not just on the fan experience side, but on the tech side and, and what other um, what other ways we can use blockchain to benefit the studio, um, benefit our IP, benefit the fans. And it's very much a work in progress. Uh, Labs is in the title for a reason. Um, so we have a number of projects. Our very first project that we launched was uh, around the Mass Singer, which is the number one uh, reality show on Fox. Um, we also have um, a partnership with the WWE and the new Fox owned uh, and uh, not NFL football network uh, or football league, the USFL. So we have a number of properties that we've been working on. Crapopolis was kind of the first uh, DGen play that we have access to <laughs> where, you know, there, there is just a ton of tie in between, you know, or a ton in, a ton of tie in possible with, you know, something that's animated lends itself to PFP, um, you know, primarily, you know, crypto type of an audience, uh, given that it's Dan Harmon, 
Um, so, you know, we've, we've kind of taken a slightly different approach with this project than, than with the others, which are a little bit more mass market focused. Um, and a big part of that reasoning is because the show's not out yet. There are no fans of the show. Um, so we're trying to test something new to try to bring fans into a show um, where marketing is typically done closer to air date and, and that sort of thing. So there's, a, you know, uh, it's a long way of saying there's a, a big experimental component to what we do at BCL, trying to test how we can kind of uh, build fandom in anticipation of a show, build fandom uh, in tandem with the show airing and everything in between. Love it. Yeah. I mean, that's really cool that you have a, like such a huge company and brand, you know, that's willing to support this because that it takes a lot of money and a lot of people to do big things right now in web three. So it's really cool that you have that support. Can you kind of talk about like what the team looks like? Like what team members and roles do you need to, to have a, a company like this that can be creative, but also very, very technical? Um, yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm trying to think, I think our team is about 40 to 50 people ish right now. Um, we have, uh, product strategists across the projects. Obviously we have, you know, our, our typical finance departments and, and, um, you know, and community teams, we have a tech team that we've been building out that, um, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of partners that we work with, uh, to kind of bring these projects to life, but our, we're, we're always working on making our internal team more robust so we could support more in-house. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, there's, there's a lot going on. I don't even know where to, where to begin with all of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a great team. It, I think I was one of the first five and it, you know, it's grown from there. So, um, and we, we are also trying to really set ourselves up to scale because, you know, now that all the Fox IP is getting wind, of uh, the stuff that we're doing, we're getting we're getting a lot of income phone calls and everyone who wants, you know, NFT projects. So you know, we're trying to uh, make sure that we can be successful before we take them all on. But the goal is to be able to deepen that fan relationship across the entire Fox IP property. When when you talk about becoming successful, what how do you define success in such an early? and kind of experimental type of initiative because part of it is Um, research and trial and error. So how do do you define success or what are your metrics? Everyone would probably define that a little bit differently. Um, I think that from my perspective, um, you know, number, the the number one goal is to drive fandom Um, more than anything. It's not, you know, let, let's hit a home run and, and become, you know, crypto punks uh, here, you know, obviously that would be, that'd be great. But ultimately like we're, we're trying to drive awareness to the show and create uh, a robust fan community. When you look at a show like Crapopolis, um, you know, it, it's very easy for people to look at it and be like, oh, well, you know, they're, you know, getting NFT money to put toward the show. And it's like, couldn't be further from the truth. It's like the show uh, costs millions and millions of dollars per episode <laughs> And it's renewed for two seasons already. Um, you know that that that's going to be a lot of money to recoup, and the network's going to need to do that in traditional ways. And what we're trying to do is just you know drive eyeballs to the show sooner and have a, a more robust um, you know audience going into it. So that's one metric of success. The other metric is. Um, you know, to really provide a tool down the road for the marketing department to kind of empower the biggest fans to be essentially a digital street team. Um, For the most part in TV, we see it all the time with all these hit shows, people talk about their favorite brands for free. So if we create a mechanism to reward them for doing something they already do, um, who wouldn't love that, right? And then, you know, lastly, it's, you know, to change the the unite directional relationship between this sit back watch tv experience to be to do something more interactive so you look at fox's innovations you know from you know i don't i don't even know how long 10 years 20 years ago you had ryan seacrest on american idol uh whipping out his cell phone saying hey vote 
now text to vote on American Idol. And that was before people even used texting as a communication, um, you know, tool. Um, and I think we see this as an opportunity to, to do the same with Web3, to, you know, onboard the masses, to get people to, you know, vote on things in show, to, you know, activate them, to kind of bring them into the conversation more. So lots of, lots of metrics for success. Um, you know, obviously financial success, uh, no, no one would be mad about that, but, you know, I think the bigger picture for Fox is, you know, kind of leveraging the fandom, um, you know, to, to create better content and, and better relationships. It's so funny. Like I, I have such a vivid memory of the American Idol texting and thinking about it now, it's like so trivial, but like, we all remember that, like text now, like vote for your favorite. <laughs> We're calling in too. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And, and, and you had to spend 10 cents per text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It, it, it's pretty true. And, you know, and so with some of our other projects, that's what we're doing. It's, you know, with the mass singer, you know, we want to create those voting experiences and now, you know, try to use those tools to like get people a little bit of like, on airtime, a little clout, you know, we're, we're, and then, and, and a little bit of that is education for, for the marketing teams at Fox as well, because they're experts already at promoting a show. They know how to do that. So when it comes to us, like, you know, at a left field saying, Hey, by the way, like we have these NFTs and like, we want to like create this ultimate fan experience for these shows. We're making asks and um, you know, this is new territory that, you know, everyone's sort of exploring and, you know, how do we bring that awareness, uh, you know, to TV. So, you know, you're watching at home on TV and you see an experience and you're like, wait, that's cool. I see like a lower third or I see a host talking about that. Um, I want to partake, partake in that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Can you um, kind of, we've danced around uh, Crepopolis in the show. Can you kind of describe what Crepopolis is and kind of what the just high level, what the NFT project Crap Chickens are? Yep. Um, I'll try to keep it brief, but there, there's so much to it. So uh, Crapopolis is a new show um, by Dan Harmon uh, coming to Fox this year. It is um, animated adult comedy. Uh, if you know Dan Harmon from Rick and Morty, I think that's a, uh, a good indication of, of the level of humor that this show will have. The show is, um, it's about the first mortal children of the Greek gods creating a civilization from scratch. So, you know, they're trying to figure out like, you know, well, what is currency? What is, you know, how do you get the news out? Uh, what is, where do you put a bathroom relative to the kitchen? Um, you know, what is a democracy? Like all these like things that are very obvious to us. Um, you they kind of address the beginnings of them in a, in a really comical, fun way. Um, so, you know, with that, there's a ton of parallels to the Web3 because it's very much the same thing where it's like the beginning of this Web3, you know, digital ownership ecosystem. And so there's a lot of fun ways to play on that. Um, the idea of the Crap Chickens, which is the inaugural NFT project for Crapopolis, came from Dan Harmon because... In the show, uh, there's three forms of currency. One is olives uh, being like the $1 bill. One is sandals being like, you know, a $20 bill. And then it's chickens, which is like the $100 bill. So it made so much sense for us to make a collection around these chickens. Um, and the chickens are all have these attributes. And all the attributes on the chickens, swords, helmets, outfits, backgrounds, so on and so forth, we're all pulled directly from the show. So you're going to, you own a chicken and it has a certain helmet on it or certain sandals or certain sword. You're going to see those elements as you watch the show and kind of build that, that connection. Um, and there's some examples of that on the website where, you know, you might see, um, you know, and we have a preview image on that, uh, our preview video on the website where there's a character with like this crazy helmet with like candles that like burns your eyes out. Like, and so like that, for example, is a trait on the chickens. Like you could have like the eye burner trait. Um, so, so that's like the tie in like visually. And it's all the same artists that did the show. Tom, did you and, lose him? I lost him. Oh, 
Am I, am I, you're, you're, no, you're still good. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. Keep okay, going. cool. <laughs> so, so that, that's like on the art side. Um, on the utility side, that's like some stuff that we're really proud of. So first and foremost, we have show voting. So uh, we've had three votes so far um, where owners of the NFT can, based on the number of chickens, you own more chickens, you get more voting weight. Um, you can vote on elements in the show. So the first one was which sailor gets slapped by a kraken. The next one was what wine is in the cup. We had what goat gets sacrificed. And these are, you know, if you partake in those votes and you watch the, those episodes on air, you're going to be pretty pumped to like know that you had a part in, in you know, that little snippet. The next thing we have is the, uh, the viewing room. So we have a token gated viewing room where we're posting short animatic clips of like the, the rough black and white, um, you know, animatics that, you know, essentially are like the early, the early mapping of the shows. So, so, you know, we don't have the full animatics. We have these like clips so you can kind of get a, a feel of the show. And as we get closer to air, we have a lot of really cool content where we're going in with the art directors and the character designers to say like, how did this character, you know, come to be, how did this character look the way they do? Like, well, you know, just the, the little nuances in the show that you wouldn't even think about, like, um, how come the palace has wooden doors, but the commoners have like cloth doors. And it was because of like the proximity of the forest to the city and like just that little, all the detail that goes into creating like a high quality animated show. So we have that component. The other thing that's like, you know, kind of one of my DGen favorites is your chicken lays an ERC-20 egg into your wallet every single day. And those act as a loyalty point where you can spend them in our store to upgrade your chicken, to buy a golden frame. Right now we have the ice cave background available. So you could essentially buy rarity using this currency that like we've created. And that's going to extend to merch and all that other stuff as, as we get closer to the show. Um, we have all types of ways to reward eggs. We've had scavenger hunts. Um, and I won five we, eggs today. I played the little game and I came in you? second. <laughs> oh, I was in there too, actually. I, uh, I, I like never the, can get those. There's always one person that is like so fast with those drawings. And I was like, man, I'm three for three on these. This, this is the best I've ever done. <laughs> oh man. That was the first time trying it. I was so slow. Like I didn't even get it. Like I, and I'm, and I'm like the one sending out the eggs too. And I'm like, I should like, play this to see what's up but i i actually want some eggs today too and i'll probably get nice. to like disclose them somewhere official to yeah. make sure like they, people don't think i'm padding my own you know egg collection um but uh but yeah so you know lots of fun stuff i think one of one of the the really cool things that we had the opportunity to do which was no small feat was the key to crapopolis so we had um an auction on open sea where we were adding, where we added the key to Crapopolis to a chicken, um, what that gets you is your chance to be written into the show as a background character. Uh, that sold for 3.1 ETH, which was pretty cool. And then the second one we gave away to the existing community uh, via scavenger hunt, where we had a, a bunch of what we thought were extremely hard questions. Turns out, people didn't it think took us they a were as a half to get it. Yeah, so it took you like no time. And I was like, it, you know, we, we tried really hard. Um, and someone won one. So, you know, we've been introducing these fun game mechanics. Um, and, you know, it, it's just the beginning and already talking to a, a, a ton of potential partners um, and collaborators. And, you know, that's, that's one of the nice things about Fox is people will pick up the phone when you call and, um, you know, it kind of makes this project very, very different than a lot of other NFT projects out there. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. And Thomas and I are both crap chicken holders. And so we're, we're in the Sweet. discord there. And it's just really cool that there's so many fans of the show that doesn't even exist yet. Right. Like all we know is that Dan Harmon made this thing and we think Rick and Morty's funny. So it's probably going to be funny. You know, we'll probably like it, but it's like, it's honestly one of the most civil and like pleasant discords that I'm in. Um, there's just, there's not a lot of animosity in crap 
Prepopolis, which is really nice in the Web3 world. <laughs> it, it, it is cool. It didn't start off that way. You know, I think that like, you know, the early days, like right at Mint, you know, there was like, you know, people kind of came into it thinking like, hey, this is a way for me to like get like generational wealth in 24 hours. And they're like <laughs> mad that they didn't on day oh, one yeah. <laughs> um but like that that group of people like fortunately left and you know i think like we had a lot of pressure in the beginning because you know there we didn't sell out on day one and you know everyone's like oh are you, are you cutting supply and we're looking at this like we're gonna have a million and a half people watching every single episode very likely like why would we cut the supply that's like you know yeah. you have you have like a stadium like you know for for the lakers and you know they're like hey we only sold a quarter of the uh the tickets like let's just not let anyone else into the stadium like it makes no sense for us you know we're we're <laughs> we're here for you know we're, we're gonna have a ton of eyes and you know everyone who's early like they get to you know upgrade their chickens and and get the alpha sooner for sure. And yeah, Josh, maybe you can touch on like how both of you are like involved in this project. Like what what are you guys doing day to day with Kripopolis and like how are you thinking about the mechanics going forward? I, I mean, strategy, Matt and I have pretty similar mentalities in terms of like proper Web3 strategy, which you could say like a lot of Web2 brands that have come into the space haven't really had people like us to kind of guide so uh, we've been, and, and you both are holders, you've seen what we've done, and obviously it's, it's, it's a long-term play because of it, it's all based on the show, right? But uh, the good thing is we got the community in line to kind of understand what's going on, know that it's a long-term play. It's not something you're going to buy today and flip tomorrow and make an ETH. Like, uh, it's probably something that once the show starts going and, and you have multiple of them, you, you, you take advantage of all the mechanics that we're putting in place, like, like the trade calendar or the discord games to get you more eggs. Um, like the key to crap office thing, what was like a, a great way to kind of that the space has never seen a utility like that. Like no one, there's not one project, not even, you know, anything like board ape or anyone that could say, Hey, you're going to be on a show on network TV. So like, that's so something cool. that's kind of uncomparable. Um, we, we have some certain other things in the works and, and then, uh, in terms of right now, what we're really trying to focus on is like partnerships, like the right partnerships, not just for the NFT side, but also for the show, uh, that could benefit our holders the best. So we have to be pretty strategic about that because, uh, we, we don't really just want anyone. We, it has to be kind of pretty big type of partnership for it to make sense for us. So mm -hmm. that's where we kind of gone now, but in the meantime, we're just going to keep focusing on these trade upgrades and which ones we think are cool, which one you guys will like, how to earn crap eggs in, you know, unique ways. It's really just trying to play with all the mechanics we can that uh, a lot of projects don't have. Like the crap eggs actually, I think it's kind of a genius idea that it doesn't really cost us money. It doesn't cost you money, but you get them. And then we find ways to, to make them valuable, which is, which is pretty fun. What do you yeah, think? I, 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 uh, oh, go sorry, ahead, go ahead. No, no, uh, I was going to say, you know, I think like a lot of the things that we're doing, number one, uh, they're, they're pretty tricky legally. Like we, we have a lot of hurdles where we come out, come up with these like wild ideas and we need to make sure that, you know, we're, we're Fox. So we need to be pretty compliant and make sure that, you know, even the language on, uh, you know, those discord announcements certain, a lot of times needs to be vetted. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of, doing a lot of things there. Um, you know, part of the reason the eggs are non-transferable and, and, and that, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, like really, really have a, a lot of fun stuff in the works. Um, the, the partnerships to Josh's point, it, it's, it's tricky, right? Because we have this, you look at how big of a merch machine like the Simpsons was, um, and eventually Crapopolis will be that. Uh, and that's that's what Fox is betting big on um, that. But right now is not the time to go crazy with the collabs when people don't want, watch the show. Right now is the time to align with the the right partners for like the right audience and like the right hype building. And, you know, like we're focused on making sure that people know how cool Crapopolis is and aligning with like the right the right partners to do that. And, and that's something to note, too, since you both are holders and, and I'm sure the community is going to end up hearing or list or seeing this, is that uh, the, the great thing about having Fox on our back is that 
we get a lot of meetings that other NFT projects don't get. Mm -hmm. So Matt and I can't say who we've talked to already and who we're planning to talk to. But the beauty of it is I think the holders are ultimately going to benefit greatly off us being able to get through doors that, I mean, not even the top NFT projects are able to get through. That's really cool. But we, we were just talking about also like how difficult it is, like from a legal side, because uh, you don't want to be mixed in, you know, with like trading and uh, like all the securities and whatnot. And, uh, and this is such a new world as well. Uh, why to like the naysayers of like Web3 and NFTs that got such a bad rap with all of like we talked about the rug pulling before. Why is this so much more special? in the web three environment versus just doing this in web two, where we already know the rules, we already know how to be successful. Why are you doing this in web three? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's kind of baby steps, right? Like we want to get to a place, you know, as BCL where the fans can have ownership and the fans can have input and have like real stake in the show. Like, obviously we're not, uh, we don't have the legal, framework in our country yet to like issue these types of securities. Um, but this is the path we need to, the first steps we need to take to get there. Um, so, you know, really we're just dipping our toes at this point, but you know, there's, there's a lot of talks internally that I can't, uh, I can't discuss yet where, you know, we really do want people to have, you know, more ownership rather than, you know, a, a kind of rent model. Um, you know, we, we know what's going on with streaming right now. We know what's going on with, um, you know, cable subscription and the way that people consume content. And, you know, we're really focused on helping give Fox uh, a new way to distribute uh, content and connect with fans. So, you know, I think that the digital uh, ownership component of what Web3 offers is a, is a really fundamental piece in, in getting to that place for sure and I, I like this this path of like the legal side is almost like inhibiting you so i'm really curious like what are some examples of like really wild ideas that you've had that well, you know that you weren't able wants, to do matt wants me, yeah matt wants me to touch on this because he knows um <laughs> He knows how frustrated I got. I, I've had like the, like the first week Matt hired me, I, I gave him all these ideas and he's like, this is brilliant. Um, but legal said no. <laughs> and, and so, so here, here's how I could kind of, Matt, if you don't mind, like I'll, I'll talk about, I mean, the best example is honestly the, the scavenger hunt because yeah. um, I, I, and you saw this with Yuga with, with the sewer pass, actually we, me and Matt thought it was funny when we figured, when we figured that Yuga was, doing this dookie dash game a skill-based mint and me and matt instantly knew why they were doing a skill-based mint because legally speaking you can't just like have like a like a like 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 me and matt can't just take a snapshot and give a random holder a gift right it's considered an illegal lottery slash sweepstakes you have to huh. have something called an alter alternative method of entry amoe and you have to make it fair for everyone. Everyone has to be eligible, or at least there has to be like an element of everyone being eligible to equally participate, right? So when Yuga came out with this sewer pass, I was laughing because I was like, they're 100% talking to the SEC because the SEC, they wanted to like probably give away some crazy prize. And it's like, all holders are going to get this, but one person's going to get this. And the SEC was like, uh, that's an illegal lottery. You can't do it. Wow. And they're like, well, how do we do it? Well, it has to be skill-based. And then Matt is the one, man, I'm pretty sure you were the one that concocted the, the trivia. Well, it was part. a little bit, it, you know, that was the, the other thing is like, okay, so you're going to have, you know, alternate method of entry, right? So like, would it, it wouldn't be right to the chicken holders to be able to say, okay, well, you guys, because you've, you've purchased a chicken, you know, get a chance to win something, but someone could send us a three by five, you know, card in the mail and also be entered to win it, Right. And then there's the other part where it's like everyone needs to have an equal shot. So we were trying to say, okay, well, like, what if like the chicken holder gets like, you know, 10 entries or like one, you know, 10 entries per chicken they have, but someone can still write something in, but like that doesn't work because it's like you, then not everyone has the, you know, the, the same chance. So, you know, with all these discussions with our, our legal team and, you know, shout out to, uh, to some of the ones who, you know, 
kind of got us through the, this this hurdle. It was okay. Well, what we can do is skill based, but the number of chickens you have equates to the number of tries you have. Um, and you know that's kind of how we got to to the scavenger hunt, which was you know that that was a big hurdle. Um, you know, with the right disclosures and everything. So for those wondering why, why we didn't just airdrop in and, you know, and then I think on the flip side, what that really did is kind of align with the North star of BCL, which is fandom. Um, you know, you're not just airdropping someone who bought this speculatively, who does not care. Like you actually need to go through some effort, watch the animatics, spend some time with the content, hopefully build your fandom. And now you have a better chance because you've done so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, I remember doing the uh, the scavenger hunt, and it was yeah, it was super fun. Like that is literally how I learned a lot about the show is just by going through and like watching his animatics over and over again, like taking notes on it. Um, so, so it was really fun. So Sean, how many did you get right out of the fifteen? I don't. Uh, I, I so remember there was that weird like glitch thing for some people. Like I feel it. I think that happened to me where I like <laughs> I like answered them and it said like they were wrong, but then I looked at it and I was like these were definitely right. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we we uh, we had that was we were kind of down to the to the wire on that one uh where you know that all the all the answers were submitted correctly but i think the confirmation screen had a, like a yeah, slight UI. issue but yeah. did you know did did you guys like uh, there was one where oh my god we were josh was like we have to get this question in where it was like what fruit is yeah, that was pinned the one, that to, one fruit was like pinned to the chest of uh of Tyrannus, the the main character of the show. And it was like, it's actually an olive, which is kind of the trick question. But um, it was like, Josh was like, we have to have Dingleberry as an option. <laughs> like, do you think we could get I that approved it. by legal? But, but there's, one, there's one reason why we want at not just Dingleberry, because, you know, Dan Harmon kind of crew, just raunchy humor, but but really, I wanted legal to say, like, we approve this. Yes. <laughs> we approve Dingleberry. Yeah, we approve the usage of Dingleberry in a, in a, in a contest on the on a Fox show. So That's awesome. Yeah. What So in this whole process, because it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun, um, you know, coming up with these mechanics and like you're literally just like creating new things that can be done here for fandom is there anything that's been like really surprising in this whole process where you're like wow this like worked way better than we thought it would um I mean, you know i think the traits I think, for me man yeah the traits um you know jo- it was josh's you know idea to do the trait calendar uh which you know was i don't remember the reason we started doing it but i think it um, you know, the idea was to incentivize people to collect specific traits rather than just strictly going, you know, through rarity to try to like, you know, because we, we, we've always kind of balanced this idea of appeal to the DGENs, but don't lose sight of the fact we're going to have a lot of people coming into the project later and we don't want them to come in and be like uh this is overwhelming where did all these trades come from how come people like it it didn't want to feel like people have been playing a game for a year and they're like so new to it that they can't catch up right so like even the very first thing we offered for sale which was the golden frame in the store the reason that we sold it for 125 eggs was because we were like okay well if someone bought one chicken because they were a fan and held it from the beginning like they would have enough eggs to purchase this item you know so we're always like trying to make sure that like you know someone who only has one chicken can have a great time in the ecosystem uh, and not skew it so heavily toward the whales where you know it just seems unattainable. Like you have to spend $10,000 in order to like be a fan because the fact of the matter is to access the viewing room, to access the voting, to access the scavenger hunt, you only need to own one chicken. Like if you own a hundred chickens, like some people do, um, it's not like you get to access that screening room, you know, a hundred times with different content. Um, So, you know, it's, it's been quite the balance. Yeah, I think it's funny that there's chicken whales um, that hold hundreds of chickens. <laughs> mm-hmm. They yeah, have so many. They have so many eggs in the leaderboard. It's it's unreal. <laughs> it it really is kind of crazy, and um, you know, but at the same time, like you know, yeah, we're 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 employees of Fox, so like we've 
I've like personally signed documentation saying that I can't buy a chicken and flip it. Like I need to hold mm -hmm. for a minimum of six months. Yet I keep finding myself buying chickens. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, I think we're both oh, fans. You're of the that. whale. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're, I think I only have like five or six. And then, and then of course, there's been plenty of times where like, you know, when we launched the new reskin of the website, we introduced a new uh, Hypermint uh, credit card flow where, you know, in the initial Mint site, we had the option where you could top up your wallet with ETH um, mm. in order to buy. And in this iteration of the, of the website, you could, we had a direct credit card purchase flow. Um, and so, you know, I was using, you know, I obviously I like I'm a DJ and I have like my ETH that like, that's where I want that's how I want to do it. But I'm like testing the flow and then like transferring chickens back to the treasury and like, you know, getting reimbursed for my purchases. But there's been plenty of times where I'm like, no, like I, I, I'm not going to like, I'm just cool with testing on myself and buying more chickens because I want to be part of it. So I think we're, we're both fans. And I think the main, the main, uh, you know, temptation that we need to resist is like adding anything uh to the trade calendars that benefit us uh, as fans it's not like you know um, you know what tomaso in the office he's in the discord as well and has been been somewhat active in the community i mean he's he he's a big spider trait holder and he's like wait when do i get golden spiders and it's like they're like wait, we, we got to keep this fair you know it's like uh you know do, doing the best we can to 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 resist temptation. I I like that you brought up the like the the reskinning and like getting a new UI because uh, I I think that's so important into like a friendly UI is going to make this whole Web three transition and adoption so much better. What are some of the things that you've noticed that help get people into the door that are just totally new to the Web three world? Um, do you, like do you think? some of these like new crap chicken holders are just like, this is their first NFT or, or is talk to us. About yeah. That. In fact, I, I know about a lot of them, you know, even a lot of our partners with Shopify and all that. I actually, right before I jumped on this call, um, you know, we have uh, a great article that's coming out with, you know, about our partnership with Shopify and some of the people we spoke to are like, Hey, I want to buy a chicken. Now it's going to be my first NFT. And, you know, it's like, Hey, I, ha I have a little bit of ETH. What do I do? And, you know, do I have enough for gas? And, you know, there, there definitely is a learning curve. I mean, even on mint day, uh, I had like big executives uh, at Fox who, you know, most people would know who they are. Like, hey, uh, I, I want to get my check in. And it's like, you know, it, it's wild when you have, you know, the big, big time people at Fox who all have crap chickens. Um, to answer your question, you know, I think as we know in web three, it functions currently a little bit more like Kickstarter. Like you are buying into a project based on a roadmap. And when people bought into crap chickens, the show doesn't exist. The leaderboard didn't exist. Like nothing existed. And we're saying, these are all the things that we're going to deliver. And systematically we've checked off like nearly every single box on that list with the exception of like launching the show, which is happening. Um, with the idea being that the typical audience who's a mass market audience is more used to, I pay my money and I'm instantly have access to everything I just paid for. So currently I wouldn't say that we have a tremendous amount of volume of people minting directly from credit card flow. Um, so I don't think that's really a, you know, it, it's such a small percentage right now. Um, that it'd be hard to even like quantify like where they're coming from and, and who they are. But the reason that's there is because when the show airs, we want it to be easy for those people to come in. So um, I guess we'll need to have another one of these chats uh, once the show's on air and, and get you, get you more info about that data. Well, it's great you bring that up. When's the show airing? <laughs> uh, great question. It's also a question that, um, I don't have the answer to, um, <laughs> you know, I think with, with, you know, there's a lot of speculation, uh, around that. So, um, you know, I know people in the discord talk about may all the time and, and all that. So I would say this, like we have the show's success, um, as our, you know, as our main interest, right. And there are certain slots on TV that set it up for success better than others. 
Uh, and a lot of that depends on the lead-ins and like what show is coming before it. Um, what time of year is it? Like there are certain things like, you know, animation domination, Sunday nights, massive. It's like, you know, is it coming after, you know, the football game ends? Like that's a huge lead. And if we could get that slot, that's huge. Right. So like, is it, you know, before the Simpsons, after the Simpsons, like what, and, 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 and obviously Crepopolis isn't the only show that Fox is bringing out this year. There's all kinds of other ones. So it's way above my pay grade to decide uh, who wins that battle for, um, <laughs> for, for the time slots. Um, but, you know, with the investment that Fox has put in to Crapopolis, you know, already renewing it for a second season before it airs, you know, at a couple million dollars an episode. I mean, I don't know, it could have, they could have $50 million committed to this already. They need to make sure that they position it in the best possible time slot for success. So I think my, you know, I, my, my message to the community and the people invested is like, sooner isn't necessarily better like i think like we we shouldn't be greedy for like let's get this on air right now most important thing is we position this for success in the best way we can and if that extends it a month two months three months like that's fine if we could get you know a million and a half people watching the show that just means more, more eggs for us right yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, Sean, there is, there is one thing that me and Matt can say. Me and Matt have seen the first season. Oh, you have. Uh, wow. And yes, me. I don't know what Matt thought. To me, by episode, it got funnier. In the last episode, I was really laughing a lot on the first season. So um, that's all we could really say about it. We can't really say any specifics. But I mean, to me, I, I think it it's going to be a a hit. And with everything Matt said, like you don't want to. There's a reason why Fox renewed it for a second season for an air, which never happens in mm. in the production world. Uh, so, like, there, there's a reason for it, and they they don't want to like just put it out there just to put it out there. So, but again, it's like way above us. I mean, this is like studio heads that are going to yeah. make that decision. Yeah. Well, we will wait patiently then. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I think that like you know, based on the success of the show, based on the success of the community and, and how people are enjoying that and, you know, how, how well they sell and all that, I think is also going to dictate our freedom to interact more with the show. Um, you know, like we have a lot of dreams. <laughs> um, like I, I look at like how the Simpsons had different opens every, you know, every week. Like I'd love to be able to sneak chickens in there. You know, like I, I'd love to have chickens in the credits, like, you know, but there's a lot of things with the, with the politics of, of a network where it's like, you know, the focus right now is let's make this show a hit. Um, so certain asks are like, yeah, we like those ideas, but like, let's, let's table them for now. Let's get this show to be popular. And, and then, you know, we'll have more flexibility down the road. So this is, you know, definitely a, a long-term thing and, and it's just the beginning. What do you what do you think the future of media and shows like holds with like the Web3? Because y'all are a thought leader right now. This is kind of like that first big experiment. Five years from now, what do you think is going to be happening? Like what's going to be mainstream? Oh man, five years is so long in crypto. Like I, I still I still it's like at least remember... two build winters, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember, yeah, like you know a year ago when like you could, you know, release a white JPEG and it would sell for five ETH. Um, I don't know what, what that looks like. I definitely see like, you know, we're kind of using Crapopolis as a little bit of a template. Um, and what we are doing with that is, you know, kind of testing our ideas and building out a system so that we could roll that into other IPs. And, you know, I think as we have the tooling to create these fan experiences, I think we're going to be able to scale a lot more. So I think you're going to see a lot more Fox IP uh, in, uh, in, in the Web3 space. And I think that we're going to have a lot of different products. It's not just going to be a BCL fan experience. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, so, some other very interesting products that, you know, kind of give you different levels of participation. Um, that's all I can say for now, but there's a lot in the works. 
What do you think, kind of going on that same train of thought, what do you think is going to be the playbook going forward? Like, is there anything that you've, that you're, through this experience with Carpopolis or the other projects that you think is going to be the playbook for media moving forward in Web3? It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think, I think we're kind of learning as we go. Um, I think from my perspective, there, there's a lot to having these things be successful. And what we're seeing across our projects is very, very different audiences. So um, you look at, you know, the mass singer audience versus the crapopolis audience um, motivations for those communities are very different. You know, where like mass singer, um, you know, they, they seem to like physical stuff more than digital. Um, they like, you know, IRL experiences. So, you know, it, it's somebody who might want to participate more in like a live vote or, you know, something like that, you know, same with, uh, we, we had Fox Deportes and, um, with those launches, you know, they, Fox Deportes, they, they're like full on web three nerds. And, um, I say, I mean that in the best way. And they're like, with them, it's like, they, like any idea we have, they're like, we'll entertain that. You want to put a fan on TV who owns the Deportes, uh, you know, NFTs, let's do it. Um, you know, we had a call this morning with, you know, Josh and Josh and I and that team and, you know, brainstorming ideas, you know, there, there's a, like some fan passes there that like the, the access that that NFT gets you if you're a soccer fan is like unreal. Even the USFL, like right now, if you go buy season tickets for the USFL on, um, you know, on Ticketmaster, you can claim a, um, a free NFT. And last season, um, we had uh, someone from our team at the stadium in Birmingham for USFL, like taking people down to the fields to meet the athletes. And, you know, so like, that's so cool. It's so cool. And so like, you know, when we, when we, I think all the audiences are going to be different. I think, you know, if I, I think the dream for the crapopolis, like holders, number one, you know, like who wouldn't want to be on TV. So like, you know, as soon as there's some crowd scenes for us to work with, like, I'm like, I want to fill up a stadium with like crap chicken holders. Um, you know, I, I think that on air, that's the long way of saying like on air is a big key component, getting people on air, getting people that like cloud. I want people taking a photo of their TV set with their name on it or their, you know, something that they participated in and telling their friends, Hey, this was a really cool experience. And the other thing is being able to deliver real experiences that are catered to each community that only Fox can offer. And I think we're getting there uh, with some of these projects and, and, you know, one by one, we're, we're starting to build out our tool set to make that a, a great experience for fans. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you guys have any advice for like solo creators or artists, because this it's a lot different than, you know, Fox is a huge corporation, but like Matt, you've released stuff on uh, art blocks. So I'm curious, like yep. what, and I have another release this? coming out. I'm not, not trying oh, yeah? to plug my own stuff, but I have another release no. coming out. So I'm not going to yeah, talk yeah, about it yet, but yes, <laughs> we can link to it. Just let me know. Um, yeah, I'm curious, like what, what have you taken from this that could be applied to, you know, individual artists and creators? Yeah, you know, I think there's, you know, not all NFTs are the same, right? Like I look at like my first collection on art blocks, like there was no discussion of utility. Like it was, you really like the art? Cool. Like enjoy the art, put it on your TV set, put it on your phone, put it on your Apple watch. Like there, there wasn't this need. I think with big companies, yeah, there, there's the need. So I think like, you know, from, from the creator you know, the smaller creator, it's, you know, you got to personalize it. And I think what people are wanting is to build their relationship with that artist or that creator in a meaningful way, much smaller scale than, you know, Fox is doing with, you know, their audience. But, you know, like, I personally, in my own, like, fine art practice, like, I'm really big on, like, bridging physical art and digital. Like, how do you, how do you link the two? How do you, if someone's interested in NFTs, can't afford the physical pieces, like, you know, how do you make that more accessible to them? Um, and I think it's, you know, I think it's all about building that relationship and it's going to look different for everybody. But 
I don't think a small creator has to necessarily compete with someone who has the resources that Fox does to be able to offer extreme utility. Um, but, you know, I, I think using it as a tool set rather than a, a one size fits all solution is going to be the key and, and staying true to who you are and, uh, and, and you're using, you know, your own voice to make a name. I don't think it's different than any other way of creating. It's just a, a new medium to do it in. On the same, um, the same train of thought of Sean asking that questions for, you know, small content creators or their solo content creators, what would you tell, uh, since Fox is like a pretty big company, um, what would you tell <laughs> other companies if they wanted or were thinking about getting involved in Web3, what would be some initial steps that they could practically take to also start, start experimenting? Yeah, I think they should try to know their audience, you know, well, um, and try to launch products that align with their community's interests first and foremost. I think it's really easy for big companies or medium companies to like look at this example of like, oh, look what look what the apes did. Like, how do we just like print money out of thin air? Just go do that. Like that's not the roadmap to follow. That's that that's like It'll the never exception happen to the rule. <laughs> so, you know, I think, you know, we, we all saw what happened with you know, some of these other bigger, I don't want to, I don't want to throw people under the bus with some of the other bigger NFTs that have launched by big brands that haven't gone as well. Um, and I think a big reason for that is like, they're not really catering to their audience. Um, it's like, they're Oh, just, just trying to catch something. a wave basically trying to catch a wave. And it, and, and I think that in this space, uh, people could sniff out uh, insincerity. And I think being authentic to the people who got your brand and your business to where it is, is probably the best place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's all an experiment right now. And I think that's why like companies with big budgets need to like Fox step up and actually like experiment and invest and like not be afraid to, to get into the, the space. Um, which is really cool. I'm curious, so we're still, and we're not in January anymore, so this question is aging quickly, but I'm curious what your uh, predictions for 2023 are in terms of Web3 or just anything, Web3 and media. Like, where are you guys thinking at the end of 2023 uh, what we're going to be looking back on? Well, by the end of 2023, uh, personally, Crapopolis will be on air. So I'm going to be... I'm, I'm going to be got an looking alpha. at it's airing in 2023. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely airing in 2023. So Heard it first uh, I'm, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a lot to, to be happy about uh, <laughs> once, once that goes, goes on. And I think that then we're, we'll be, you know, once we have the initial, you know, at least from Krabopolis, you know, and actually from the perspective of most of our other properties, because, you know, the people who own the mass singer NFTs, the people who own the USFL, the Deportes NFTs, it's a relatively small group of super fans and people who are super interested. And I think that ultimately those will still always serve as like the early adopter first of the first. And once this becomes a little bit more well-known and I think then we'll need to have a lot of products and ways for people who come down the road to be able to partake in these ecosystems, probably at different varying levels compared to the the earliest adopters who have more money invested um you know but but ultimately like the goal of bcl is not just a couple thousand people here and there it's you know onboarding the masses into you know what this is and doing so in a way that feels natural seamless uh not a big tech lift and you know i think as technology evolves as um you know as we get better at crafting our messaging, at communicating um, to our marketing departments to, you know, provide the right type of help uh, for us to reach these audiences, I think, you know, we'll be able to achieve some of that, some of that mass market adoption. And hope, hopefully by the end of 2023, if not, you know, within the next couple of years. I, I have a broader and pretty bold answer to that. Let's hear it. So I think 20, this year is going to be like a rebuilding year compared to what happened in the past few months of the space. And I see mass adoption for Web3 
uh, by the end of 2024 uh, to the point where we won't have to have these conversations anymore about what an NFT is or how people manage their wallet. I also think there's going to be some kind of security measures put in place. Someone's going to create something eventually where these scams stop because mm-hmm. that's what's holding us back more than anything, in my opinion, um, especially with the people who are defrauding it and you know pulling rugs. And I think those are going to stop eventually with enforcement. And I see mass adoption by the end of 2024 um, and very few projects are that we're like all focusing on right now are going to make it. And by the time we're at the end of 2024, you're going to see the big companies kind of really take it over. And then the, then the projects right now that are really thriving are, I would say about half of them are going to continue thriving and set that like kind of standard in the space. And then the, the big companies like us are going to be right there with them. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Do you have any thoughts on what that thing is that's going to bring the mass adoption? Like what's the iPhone moment for us? It, well, security, I think, is number one, because everyone I've talked to about um, crypto and NFTs has said, like, don't you just get get scammed every second while you're on there? So I, I think cybersecurity is going to be number one. Um, number two, I think the technology just needs more room to prove itself. Uh, Starbucks is a wonderful example. I mean, they are thriving right now, um, and they're not even on the, the main network for NFTs. So uh i I think it's just going to come down to more people getting to see how the technology can benefit you and my example with nfts is i mean i was a kid when this happened but if if you guys all remember i mean early 90s it it was a joke to use email like you said the word email and people laughed at you um i mean me and matt probably send at least 60 emails a day um you know and we're and that's probably being conservative for me matt's probably much crazier than me but uh, what I'm getting at is that people didn't understand email, right? They heard email and thought it was a joke, and then they saw how convenient it was, and then all of a sudden email became the number one method of, of communication, right? Text messaging, you kind of took it over, but you get the point, right? So I think people are going to soon learn the technology and see how beneficial it is, and once that kind of gets done the right way by someone, uh, that's when it's going to really, I think, take off once people see that. Well, I'm here for it, so I hope you're right. (laughs) Matt, Josh, thanks so much for being on the show. This is fun. Thank you for having us.